It's time that we have a moment of silence for Dustin Poirier and his career. Because I believe Benoit St. Denis, who we just signed to fight, God bless Dustin Poirier for signing to fight Benoit St. Denis. We're finally getting to see Dustin fight a young up-and-coming contender that's ranked below him. Thank goodness. But, man, that's a tough one. And man, is he going to get destroyed? All right, now I understand you're going to be coming at me with the recency bias, recency bias nonsense. This is a different type of prospect. This is a different beast. People tell me I'm glazing. What have I said that's wrong about this guy's skill set? Okay? You could say I'm glazing all you want. Just wait until Benoit St. Denis goes out there and knocks out Dustin Poirier, and then we can talk. Because if you guys are pumping the brakes on him just because you've seen other lightweight prospects get fraud checked, you've seen Rafael Vaziv have that decision with Justin Gagey, you've seen Jalen Turner go out there and get checked by Dan Hooker and you think this is going to be the same, Benoit St. Denis is running through Poirier. End of. I I'm done fucking around. I'm done beating around the bush. I know Dustin Poirier is a killer. He's only lost to Hall of Famers. Yeah, well, he was getting his ass kicked by low IQ Michael Chandler. Remember Michael Chandler picking him up, slamming him down, beating him up in the second round, giving him problems on the feet with the pressure? He goes out there looking for a big flashy slam in the third round, which ultimately gasses him out. But listen, cardio and Chandler, they just don't go well together. Benoit St. Denis has nutty cardio. Benoit St. Denis fights like an angry, hungry animal. Whereas Dustin Poirier, at this point in his career, you watch a Dustin Poirier interview, he's saying things like, you know, I just have to go back to the drawing board and figure out why I'm still here. He's at that point where he's got one foot in and one foot out. You're going to get run over from Benoit St. Denis thinking like that, dude. He's going to put a pressure on Dustin Poirier that Poirier hasn't dealt with very well in the past. I don't care if Dustin Poirier beat Dan Hooker, went to absolute war with him in his prime. I don't care if he beat Max Holloway. I don't care if he, if he beat Conor McGregor. Give me the grapplers, the well-rounded grapplers that DP's dominating. Dominating. Give me them. They don't exist. All right? Dustin Poirier, man. I know he's got the skills to put any guy away. Benoit St. Denis has never been dropped in his UFC career. The guy has a granite chin. And when you mix it up on Dustin Poirier, when you take this guy down, he's a different fighter. Look at what Charles Oliveira did to him. Charles got in his face, slugged it out. Remember we were talking about how Charles was maybe not the most defensively sound fighter going into that. He had gotten dropped by Michael Chandler, and people were clowning him, saying, oh, he's a little bit too wild for DP. He goes out there, gets in his face, gets dropped, but still has success, survives the first round, puts pressure on DP, tires him out a little bit. Then they go to the ground in the second, and Dustin Poirier's whole MO in that fight was to not try to explode to get up to his feet because that was the mistake that he made in the Habib fight. Right when he got taken down by Habib, he would try to explode to get up to his feet, and he wouldn't leave himself open in vulnerable positions where Habib was able to capitalize and ultimately got the submission. But he survived the onslaught in the second round against Charles, who got him on the ground. He was in Dustin's guard. He was elbowing him in the face. Dustin wasn't really making a big effort to get up to his feet. You expect him to be refreshed in the third round, and all of a sudden he's totally gassed. Poirier's totally gassed. And that's, an, that's a younger version of Poirier. All right? Michael Chandler goes out there, takes him down when he wants. Habib goes out there, takes him down when he wants. Charles Oliveira took him down when he wanted. And he was a sitting duck in the third round waiting to get submitted. Okay, we need to stop looking at Benoit St. Denis like a wild man striker. He's not. All right? Benoit St. Denis' most lethal part of his game is the grappling. This guy destroyed Tiago Moises. And I know it's Moises. I get it. I get it. But Islam Makhachev couldn't do Moises like that, all right? Islam Makhachev couldn't do him like that. And he didn't just submit him. He didn't just get him in a good position and ground and pound TKO him. Dude, he broke Tiago Moises up against the fence. He had him in the fetal position, holding on to the fence, cowering up for dear life. Benoit St. Denis went out there and submitted Gabriel Bonfim in the first fucking round. Or is it Ismail Bonfim? <laughs> I don't remember... Which Bonfim brother it was. I, I always confuse the names. But he went out there and submitted the hyped up prospect Bonfim in one round. Went out there, body kicked him, slammed the body kicks.
got Bonfim thinking emotionally, took him down, twisted up the legs, got his back, and choked him the fuck out. And you're telling me that this guy and the way that he's running through people, going out there and head-kicking Matt Frivola in the first minute and a half, out-grappling Matt Frivola, and yeah, he out-grappled him. He got taken down, fair enough. Got right back up to his feet. Got the butterfly hooks, reverse positions, right back up to his feet, put a pressure on Matt Frivola that he wasn't comfortable with. Frivola tried to circle out, boom, head kick KO. I think that this guy's too hungry for DP at this point, and I think he runs through him. All right, Poirier, you can take him down. He's got those old man hips, those old hips of DP. He's a little bit different than Justin Gagey, but we always talk about Poirier and Gagey as the guys that the grapplers could beat. Gagey's tough to take down. Once you get him there, it's it's done. It's over, right? He's got white belt jiu-jitsu level defense. It's not that great. DP's going to survive a little bit. He's going to be a tough out on the ground, but he's always the inferior grappler in the lightweight division compared to these other guys. He is. He is. But DP, he's not this unbeatable fighter. It's not like, you know, Justin Gagey is just some different fabric. And I understand Justin, Justin Gagey's a beast. I get it. But people act like Poirier. He's only losing to guys that are gods. He's only losing to, to gods. He's now fighting a mere mortal. Okay, great. Keep thinking that. Keep thinking that, man. Because the last time I checked, Dan Hooker fucking brought this guy to war. And Hooker's pretty good. Hooker's pretty good, but he's not Benoit St. Denis, dude. <laughs> he's not. You guys are going to find out, man. And I just don't think that Benoit St. Denis is as defensively irresponsible. as People act like this guy is always getting hit. He's always getting teed off on. He had one fight in his career with Zaleski Dos Santos, a sauced-up monster in the welterweight division. I'm pretty sure he took that fight on short notice. He didn't even get dropped. If anything, that was a chin showcase. A chin showcase, if anything. And that's the only moment in his career where he's taken a lot of damage. Every other fight in his career, he's went out there and smoked people, and he's not getting into scraps. He isn't. People get it twisted. He got hit with one big shot against Tiago Moises. One big shot. And people think he's sloppy. He's not. For sure, Dustin Poirier is going to hit him. 100%. But look at his fights back. This guy does not get hit that often. Against Matt Frivola, he wasn't getting teed off on. Got hit with a couple shots. That was it. I'm sorry, guys. But I think DP's getting knocked out on the feet. I think Benoit's taking him down, which DP can be taken down. He's going to tire him out. And the pressure and the cardio of Benoit St. Denise is going to be too much. Eventually, he's going to catch Dustin Poirier with something on the feet while he's getting a little bit tired. And he's going to knock him out. And... You guys will understand that this is the prospect in the lightweight division, okay? I can't wait to tell you I told you so because I know a lot of people are going to be in the comments right now disagreeing with this. He's different. He, I think he beats everyone in this division other than maybe Charles and Makashev, but that's it. Those are the only guys that give him issues right now. So if you don't believe me, great. You think I'm glazing? Tell me I'm glazing when this guy knocks out Dustin. How about that, okay? All right. He's going to beat Dustin Poirier, and he's going to get a title shot at the end of the year. Does he beat Makachev? I don't think so. But no one does, all right? This guy's too well-rounded. He's too dangerous everywhere the fights go, all right? You got to worry about the nasty power on the feet just as much as you have to worry about the ground game. And that's a nightmare to deal with. Mentally, that's a nightmare to deal with. It'll make you hesitant. Trust me. This guy's going to run across the cage like an absolute fucking animal. He's going to body kick Dustin Poirier. He's going to put him up against the fence. He's going to take him down with those old man hips. And that's all she wrote. DP is going to get up to his feet. Different guy, right? That dog in him may not be the same as it used to be. And I have a reason to think that when he gets grappled against, he tires out quickly. When you tire out quickly, you get hurt more quickly on the feet. But anyway, I can't wait to see this fight and respect to Dustin Poirier for taking this because I was worried that we were going to get a Benoit St. Denis versus Benil Dariush, okay? I was worried that we were going to get a Dustin Poirier, Nate Diaz. These fights that just wouldn't have been competitive. And even though I'm picking Benoit, this is going to be a, a fun fight. It is competitive. And Dustin Poirier, as long as this fight is standing early on, because I think that as soon as he gets taken down, it's going to be issues because let's stop pretending that Dustin Poirier, just because he's been ranked in the top five for a long time, has like brick wall takedown defense and only the gods take him down. 
All right, just enough of the bullshit, please. You're not you're not seeing his takedown defense really proven that much against Dan Hooker when Dan Hooker's taking him down. Okay, Conor McGregor's not shooting takedowns. L- let's stop pretending that this guy is some god that's untouchable that only the Hall of Famers only the Hall of Famers can beat him. Benoit Saint Denis is gonna go out there and annihilate this dude. And I wouldn't say the same thing for just any other contender. I wouldn't say the same thing for Jalen Turner. I wouldn't say the same thing for Rafael Fazeev. I wouldn't say the same thing for Mateusz Gamrot. Different guy. Another thing, UFC 299 gets another fight. Pretty crazy that this is on UFC 299. I mean, that card as it is already, before this fight got added, was one of the best pay-per-views of all time. If none of the fights fall off, that will be the best pay-per-view that there's ever been in UFC history. I don't want to hear about UFC 205, okay? All these legendary UFC cards have had like maybe five good fights on them. This literally has 10 plus good fights on it, like with big names, all right? Gilbert Burns, Jack De La Maddalena, Peter Yan, Song Yudong, Sean O'Malley, Marlon Vera, Benoit St. Denis, Dustin Poirier, MVP, Kevin Holland, Mateusz Scamrot, Rafael Dos Anjos. We have Curtis Blades, Jilton Almeida, Ian Gary, Jeff Neal. Bro, I'm sorry. This is the best pay-per-view ever. If the fights don't fall off, okay? If any of these don't fall off, we need to fucking make sure that people realize how special this event is, all right? Because this is going to be special. And I'm going to make a breakdown for Charles Oliveira and Armand Sharikian as well. That's going to be on UFC 300. But man, if there's a pay-per-view that's worth the 80 bucks, it's this one. Okay, I'm, I'm happy to chalk up my 80 bucks for this one. I'm telling you that. So until next time. What is up, guys? It's Lucas Tracy MMA here. And I want to let you guys know that I have something for you. And that's a real food cookbook. Because if you're walking around looking like Chris Dawkins, you got to get that weight off. I don't know if you think you're DC or something, but most people usually don't perform at their best when they're walking around with 30% body fat. So if you're trying to lean out and you still want to eat good, tasty comfort foods, well, you can check out my Real Food Cookbook because I've made it a purpose to have good, tasty foods that you can still eat just without all the processed bullshit, without all the processed ingredients like soy and seed oils. So guys, check out the Real Food Cookbook. Use code MMA for 30% off. The link is in my description. Don't forget that discount.